Hey everyone, welcome to finding the nth roots of a complex number. In order to do this, we want to make sure our, our z is in polar form. So that's step number one. Make sure your complex number is in polar form to even start this problem. Uh, the n distinct complex numbers of the nth root of r times cosine theta plus 2 pi k over n plus i sine theta plus 2 pi k over n, where k is between 0 and n minus 1, are the nth roots of the complex number z. So we're going to find these complex roots, the nth roots, using this expression. This looks a lot harder, I think, than it, it is, you know, um, because that definition is a little quirky. So here is our problem. Here's our complex uh, example. So find the complex cube roots of z equals 2 times the quantity cosine of 120 degrees plus i sine of 120 degrees. So a lot of things I know right off the bat. I know my theta is 120 degrees. I know my n is actually equal to 3. It tells me cube roots. Okay. I know that k is equal to n minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. So the nth roots I'm finding are k equals 0, comma, 1, comma, 2. Always one less than the number you're finding, right? And notice how the cube roots, there are 3 total. Okay, I know my r is equal to 2. Okay, so I have all this stuff listed here on the left, which is really good. Okay, so if I wanted the general form of z sub 0, so z sub k, whatever my k value is, let's look. It's going to be the nth root of r times cosine of theta plus 360 degrees times k over n, all that over n, plus i sine of that same quantity, theta plus 360k over n. Okay, let's make sure I got everything. Now that's the general form. I switched it from 2 pi k because I'm in degree. So let's just clean this up a little bit because I should say, I'm sorry, z sub k, not 0 here. That should be z sub k. Okay, so let's look at um, z sub k in general. n is 3, so we're going to have the cube root of the r value, which is 2. We get 2 from here okay times cosine of theta which is 120 degrees plus 360 degrees times k all over 3 plus i sine of this whole thing again it's a carbon copy 120 plus 120 degrees degrees of 360 k all over 3 okay I could clean this up a little more so I have the cube root of 2, and this is going to be times um, cosine of 120 divided by 3 is 40 degrees, plus 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. Okay, okay. And that's going to be plus I sine of the same thing, 40 degrees, okay, plus 120 degrees K. Okay, now if you want to, you can just put these in like brackets or parentheses just kind of to separate to see what's going in for our argument for our, our function so there we go that's the gen that's z sub zero that's the hardest part now now all we need to do is look at z when k is zero one and two so z sub zero k is going to be zero it's the whole thing again wherever you see a k you're getting zero Okay, so let's look at how to simplify this out. All we need to do now is plug in what we need for k, which in this case is 0. So we're going to have the cube root of 2, okay, times cosine of 40 degrees plus 120 degrees, and we're going to just have times 0 there, times 0, okay, close that off, plus I sine of 40 degrees plus 120 degrees times 0, close it off, okay, so our first 0 is just simply the cube root of 2, and that's going to be of cosine of 40 degrees 
plus I sine of 40 degrees. Okay, there's our first answer for Z sub zero. Now Z sub one is the exact same thing again, except wherever we see a zero now, wherever we see a K, we're substituting one. So if you think about 40 plus 120 is 160, 40 plus, so it's 160, but I'll write it out again. So we have the cube root of two times, you're gonna have cosine of 40 degrees plus 120 degrees, now times one. So times one here, okay. I'll, I'll be specific, we'll close that off so we can see plus I sine of 40 degrees plus 120 degrees, again, times one here, okay? So we close that off, close that off. Okay, I guess do it up here too, we forgot one. And now that's just gonna be the cube root of two times cosine, now it's 40 plus 120, which is 160 degrees, okay? Plus I sine of 160 degrees, okay? There's our second complex root, okay? And now the last one, it's the exact same thing again, but now where we see K, we're substituting two, okay? So we're gonna substitute two, so this would be 240, right? 240 plus 40, so if we you know slow this down and, and go ahead and just do cube root of this, your final one is gonna be cosine of 280, degrees plus I sine of 280 degrees as well. Okay, so there's your third complex, okay, your complex cube roots. Those are the three, okay? So in a second here, let me just pause and I'll show you what this actually means. Okay, so now we're back and I just want to show you uh, what's going on here. So what we notice is that each of these three cubic cube roots or complex roots here um, were all had the same magnitude of the root cube root of two okay and so that means they're all this same distance we are from the origin so if you look at the origin here each of the points are the same distance they say have the same magnitude now the the the, the degrees are 120 you know away from um, one another. So if you, if you think about it, uh, they, they're, they're 40, you know, 160, 280, so they're equally spaced apart. And so when we talk about these complex roots, this is what it looks like. So they have the same magnitude, but they're zero. So here's Z sub zero right here. The distance, so there is our complex root. Here's our second one, Z sub one and, and Z sub two. So this is what it means when we talk about these complex roots. I just wanted to show you the diagram here of what it means. It's like, okay, we find these complex roots. What does it mean? What does it look like? And, and, and this is a great generalization of those three examples. So if you have any questions or comments on how to find those complex roots, let me know. Uh, we'll see you next time.